All right, in this lesson here, we're going to learn how to uh, check multiple conditions. So let's say I have three variables. A equals 1, comma, B, comma, C equals 8. OK. <coughs> now, um, I'll say I had an if statement. Let's say I said, enter a value between A and C. And then I want the user to input a value for B. Okay, so let's run this here. Now keep in mind this won't work here. So just to show you what this does here, I can just enter B. It says in this case it says enter a value between one and eight when it prints to the screen here. Say enter eight. Alright, nothing happens here, but now I want to check to see if it is between one and eight. So first I can only check one condition. If B is less than C. Now that's a start. Okay. If B is less than C, I'm going to execute everything inside this loop here, which means I want to execute another if statement. If now I want to see if um, A is less than B. So B is less than C. If this is if this is true here. I'm going to output, oh, jerk, I'm going to output, um, correct, so, enter a value between 1 and 8, let's say enter 5, it says correct and it ends, now of course, I got to add a system pause, so we can actually see it, for longer than a quarter of a second. And I want to output a new line. And let me make this bigger here so we can see it. So enter a value between A and C. So if I enter 5, it'll say correct. If I enter um, 9, it won't say anything at all because it's not correct here. So let's see what happens if I entered 9 here. Well, is 9 less than C? Is 9 less than 8? That's a false statement, so we skip to the end of the program here. Let's say I entered a negative 3. Well, that's false here. Is a negative 3 less than 8? this is true here. Because this is true, we're going to execute everything inside here, which is only one statement. There's only one statement in here, so we're going to execute if is negative 3 less than 1. Or, or is uh, 1 less than negative 3. This is the 1 here. Well, that's false, so, we, so then nothing gets executed here. And that's, and that's how we can check multiple things. So we can check to see if... Um, we can also check to see if it's even here or not here. So we can use embedded if statements to check multiple conditions here, but there's a better way to do it. So using the same exact, just to execute the same exact code here, we can shorten it up by using logical operators. There's going to be three logical operators here in C++ here, and the first one's going to be the AND operator. So if if A is less than B, and B is less than C here. So to check to see if, um, so we can put multiple Boolean values in here. Now this AND operator requires both pieces to be true here. 
Now, um, you can watch the extended video here to show you more complex here, complex um, examples here, because it, it can get pretty complex here. We can have multiple, multiple conditions. We can check to see if uh, several things are going to be be executed here, but both pieces of this have to be true here. So, with this and operator, the left side has to be true and the right side has to be true. Now using those same examples here, let's say I entered 2, it's correct. Now if I entered like something bigger than 8, which is 10, it's not correct. And if I enter something smaller than 1, it's not correct. So this will check to make sure to see both pieces are being satisfied here. Now enter a number, enter a value that is not between 1 and 8. So what I can do, I want um, I want B, if, if A is greater than B, if A is bigger than B, then it can be true. Or I want um, B to be greater than C. Well, this is impossible here, right? No matter what I do, both cannot be true. It's impossible. Okay? Well, let's say I use the OR operator. And it's the symbols here. They look like a parallel, they look like vertical lines. And it's the symbol above the IF key, or, or the ENTER key. It's a symbol above the ENTER key. It's on the same one as the uh, your uh, backslash here and um, you just have shift and you press it and it comes up here this is called the OR operator only one has to be true here and again the extended video will show you more complex things where you can check several different conditions here maybe we want um, maybe we want B to be divisible by 2 maybe um, it, only if uh, we can have multiple multiple things to check for but in this case, only one one of these guys here have to be true here for it to be true. In this case, let's say I enter negative 3. It says correct. Because negative 3, a, a is greater than negative 3 here. That's It only needs to check that one. Once it sees that one, it does not care what's on this other side here because only one of them is true. Only one condition has to be true here. So we have two Boolean values here. And only one has to be true when we separate them with the OR operator. If we use the AND operator, where is it at? Yes, yeah, the symbol of a seven here. We would, we would, uh, they'd both have to be true. But since we're using the OR, only one has to be true. So let's say in her, I enter a value that's between those two. Let's say I enter five. Well, neither one of these conditions is true. Since neither one of them is true, it'll be considered a false statement. And that's how we can correct. That's how we can check for two of them here. Now, finally, the not operator here. So let's say I put this as a. Let's say this is um just false here. And let me just delete this here. Obviously, it's not gonna output the C out because I set the whole billing value to false here. Now we're gonna learn the not operator. It's an exclamation sign. So if this is not false, this whole thing is going to be considered true here. So you can think of the not operator as a reverse. You reverse the statement. In this case, it'll execute because it's not, we say, not false, it's correct here. So whatever this is, if you, put, if you denote it with a not here, it's just going to change it to true. If I turn this to true here, if I, if I type in true here, it will execute the code inside the loop. But if this is not true here, we can say it's false here because notice it didn't execute it because the not says it just reverses the uh, the boolean value. So you can think of it as a reverse function. 
but it's really called the not operator. But sometimes if you say, is this not true? Well, this is a false statement, but it sounds kind of funny. So you can just think of it as a reverse. You reverse the statement. In this case, this is going to be false because this not reverses the true to false. All right. So let me let me back up here. Let me back up to that example. I knew I should have shouldn't have deleted it all yet. All right. Let's say we look. Let's say we look at the original example. Enter a value. And let's say we use the and operator. Well, another application to the not operator here. Let me put spaces here so we can see what's going on here. And if I uh, enter a value between these two here, it's going to say it's correct. Because both of these statements are true when I enter a value between 1 and 8 here. But to satisfy this statement here, I can put this whole thing in parentheses and then just use a not sign on it. So it's going to say, it's going to reverse the statement if it's inside here. In this case, it says it's, it doesn't say it's true. Now, if I did like 13 here, that's true because 13 is not between 1 and 8. Because this piece here evaluated a true. Because uh, 13, well, actually, this piece here evaluated a false here. Because uh, 1 is less than 13 here, this one was true here, but this one was false here. 13 was not less than 8. So this whole thing became false here. But this not sign reversed the false statement to true. And it, that's why this whole thing here evaluates the true here. So for a better example, if you, if you want to see um, more, we can, we can look at tables to make this thing easier if it's a little confusing. Because I won't be um, going over too many complex operations right away until I get to the really high level lessons. You know, I'll start to apply a little bit more here. But um, if you're taking a class or whatever, um, I'll post uh, bigger examples right here. But for what we're going to use for the next 30 lessons or 40 or whatever we're going to be using, they won't be that complex. But here's a watch the extended video if you have to see the more complex examples. But you can always come back to the extended video. All right. So that's the end of this video. And we're going to go over a little bit more on the while statement, the while loop.